Hello and welcome to Baiju's IES. As you must be aware, UPSC has come out with a detailed notification for the civil services examination to be conducted in the year 2021. The notification is generally considered as one of the most important document when it comes to the whole examination cycle. That is because it is through this notification that we get a detailed idea about the examination in itself, the eligibility criteria for the candidates, as well as we get to know about how to apply for this exam. So in this video, we shall be dealing with all these three topics and we shall be taking a look at the requirements of the examination, the eligibility criteria, as well as how do we apply for this exam. When we talk about the detailed information about the exam, it is through this notification that we get an idea about the various services which are available and where posts shall be filled through this examination. We also get an idea about the total number of vacancies that are available for the year 2021. Along with that, we also find listed in this notification in itself the total number of centers for prelims as well as the mains examination where the candidates can go and appear for the exam. Here, you will also find a detailed listing of the syllabus of each and every subject which are asked in the examination. So that is why going through the notification in greater detail should be the prerogative of each and every candidate. But let us go through each of these and let us understand what is it that UPSC tells us through this notification. So when you talk about the services which are available, then as you can find, there are around 19 services which have been listed by UPSC where the posts shall be filled through this examination. And the application of these services and the priority list comes much later on. At this stage, the notification just gives you an idea about the total services that are available. When you talk about the number of vacancies, then as you can see this year, UPSC has come out with 712 vacancies for this examination. And this includes around 22 vacancies which are reserved for persons with benchmark disability. So the total number of vacancies is around 712. Then we move on to the allotment of centers. Now, in order to appear for the examination, you need to go to a center both for prelims as well as mains exam. It is in the form itself where the UPSC inquires from the candidates about the centers where the candidate wants to appear for the examination. But allotment of the centers is strictly on the terms of first come first serve basis. That is, sooner that you fill the application form, greater is the probability of you finding the center of your choice. So if you look at the centers that are available for the examination, then for the prelims examination, as you can see on your screen, there are a host of different centers where you can go and you can appear for this examination. When it comes to the mains exam, the number of centers are comparatively lesser, but still, plentiful where you can go and appear for the mains exam. So that is why it is always advised to fill the application form at the earliest so that you have the luxury of choosing the centers of your choice. Now, when we talk about the plan of examination, the notification also helps us understand that how this examination is conducted. So this examination of civil services is conducted in two stages. In the first stage is the prelims examination. The prelims examination or the preliminary test is typically held to select the candidates who shall be appearing for the mains examination. 
the mains examination in itself is classified into two different parts. One is the written portion and the other is the interview portion or what is also referred to as the personality test. It is after you compete and after you succeed in the mains examination that you find your name in the merit list. Prelims examination is purely for the qualification purposes and that is why the marks of the prelims examination is not counted in the final merit list. Now when we talk about the eligibility criteria, the notification mentions in greater detail about the requirements that need to be fulfilled by the candidates in order to be eligible for the examination. So be it the nationality, be it the age limit, the minimum educational qualification, the number of attempts that each candidate is entitled to, as well as few of the restrictions when it comes to applying for the examination, including the withdrawal of application form and so on. So when you talk about the nationality criteria, when it comes to the services such as IAS, Indian Foreign Service and Indian Police Service, the candidature is strictly restricted to citizens of India. But for rest of the services out of the 19 that have been listed in the notification, a candidate can fulfill either of the criteria that have been mentioned below here. Next, coming to the age limit. So the minimum age that is required to be eligible to apply for this examination is 21 years and the maximum age limit is capped at 32 years. But this age shall be calculated as on 1st of August 2021. That is, whatever age that you attain up till the date of 1st of August 2021 should be within the bracket of 21 to 32 years. In order to simplify it, we can also understand it by understanding that a candidate should not have been born before 2nd of August 1989 or not later than 1st of August 2000 because that is what puts him in that age bracket who is eligible to apply for the exam. Then there is a relaxation of age limit for different candidates. So if a candidate belongs to scheduled caste or a scheduled tribe, there is a relaxation of five years. That is, for those candidates, the upper age limit shall be 37 years. If a candidate belongs to other backward classes, then the relaxation that is provided is of three years. So in this case, the upper age limit is 35 years. For defense service personnel who have been disabled in operations anywhere, the age relaxation is again of an additional three years. And for persons with benchmark disabilities, a maximum of 10 years of relaxation has been given in age when it comes to appearing for this exam. Now, the minimum educational qualification that is required by the candidates before appearing for this examination is that the candidate should have passed through any of the central or state universities at the graduation level. So the proof of passing is required before the mains examination when you fill the detailed application form for the mains examination. So even those candidates who are in fourth year of your college, last year of your graduation or whatsoever, you can fill this application, you can appear for the examination provided that before the mains examination, you can get the proof of passing certificate which can be uploaded in that detailed application form. Now, the number of attempts is restricted to six attempts for general candidates. But then there is a relaxation when it comes to other category of candidates. So candidates belonging to 
scheduled castes or scheduled tribes have an unlimited number of attempts provided they are within the age bracket. For candidates belonging to other backward classes, the total number of attempts are 9. And also, for candidates belonging to people or persons with benchmark disabilities, there are 9 attempts which are provided for them. So, provided that you are within the age bracket, the eligibility in terms of number of attempts that differs from each candidate. So make sure that you are aware that which section do you come under and thereby you fill the form accordingly. Now, the last date for online submission of application is 24th March till 6 p.m. After that, the portal closes and you will not be able to apply for the exam. Now, many of the candidates generally tend to apply at the last date or just at the penultimate day. So, it has been observed that during these times, there are lots of candidates who tend to apply for the exam. So, the server of UPSC slows down considerably, whereby the candidates face significant amount of difficulty in applying and paying for this examination. So that is why I humbly request all of you to fill this application form as early as possible so that not only do you get the center of your particular preference, but also so that you don't face any difficulty in filling the application form. Now, the eligibility for availing reservation, for that, if a candidate who is eligible to get the benefit of any of the caste reservations, thereby the candidate has to ensure that it belongs to the list of reserved communities which are issued by the central government. The OBC candidates who apply for this examination have to ensure and they must produce the OBC non creamy layer certificate based on the income for financial year 2019-20, 2018-19, as well as 2017-18. That is, the previous three years of income certification is needed in order to prove that you are in a non creamy layer. Then, candidates who belong to the economically weaker section or EWS category, they need to furnish the requisite income and asset certificate based on the income for the financial year 2019-2020. Now, if any candidate wants to change the category of reservation later on, UPSC does not allow that. Even if you are a person with benchmark disability, and if you want to change the subcategory of disability later on, the portal will not allow you to do that. So that is why, while filling the application form, take due care that you fill the right category that you want to avail. Now, in order to facilitate the candidates, UPSC has also provided a provision for withdrawal of applications. So in case you are a candidate who has applied for the exam, but meanwhile you think that you will not be appearing for the examination, then the portal for withdrawal of application shall be open from 31st of March 2021 to around 6th of April 2021 up till 6 p.m. Now in this case your attempt shall not be counted. Anyways, even if you fill the application form, Unless and until you go to the exam and you appear for the examination, the attempt shall not be counted by UPSE. Okay? Now, the scheme and subject for the prelims and the mains exam. The prelims examination is divided into two parts. Firstly, you get the general studies paper one whereby you get all the questions from the normal subject or the general studies course and syllabus that you have studied. So that is the part which counts in order to decide whether a candidate is selected for the mains examination or not. 
The paper two of general studies is Civil Services Aptitude Test or CSAT, whereby even though the examination is of 200 marks, in order to pass this examination, the candidate has to secure only 33% marks. And it is a qualifying paper. Unless and until you don't secure 33% marks in paper two, you are not eligible anyways for the mains examination. But the marks of this paper two shall not be counted while coming up with the merit list for the mains exam. Now, the mains examination consists of various papers. It again starts with the qualifying papers where you get a paper A where any one of the Indian language which has to be selected by you, that is included for around 300 marks. And then you have a paper B of English, which again is inclusive of 300 marks. So these are qualifying papers. Again, you require to score only 25% marks in these papers and the marks that are attained in these papers are not counted for the final merit list. Here on the screen, you find a detailed list of all the languages that can be selected for paper A. Now, the papers which shall be counted for merit and for the merit list of the mains exam include paper one, that shall be the essay paper, which shall be of 250 marks. Then you have general studies, four different papers of general studies, each carrying 250 marks. Then you also have the optional subjects and two papers of the optional subjects, each having a weightage of 250 marks giving the total weightage of the written exam to around 1750 marks. The personality test or the interview portion of the mains exam, again, carries a weightage of around 275 marks, bringing the total marking to around 20, 25 marks. Now, the optional subjects are again a very important portion of UPSC. So please make it a point that you go through all the optional subjects that are provided and that are available to you to be selected for the examination. Now then we come on to how to apply for this examination. So you can go to upsc.gov.in whereby you will find this particular page on your screen. Now, here you will find on the right hand side listed exam notification, civil service prelims examination. Upon clicking on this link, you shall be directed to this window where you get a small window where you get civil services prelims examination, the notification. Here is the link for downloading the notification. So in case you want to go through the notification in greater detail regarding the perusal of syllabus in order to make yourself aware about the other details of the examination, you can download the notification from this particular link. But in order to apply for the examination, you click on the link which is present at the rightmost part. Upon clicking on that link, you are redirected to the window for application. So here, as you can see, here you get a detailed idea about part one and part two registration. So in order to apply for this examination, you have to complete both part one as well as part two registration of this application form. Only then shall your application form be considered as complete. Now, when you click on part one registration, firstly, you are directed to a host of important notices and important instructions. It is very important that you go through these important instructions in greater detail. Here, you will find the requirements that are listed for each part one and part two. One of the important instructions that are mentioned here is actually point number three. 
because it is here that it is mentioned that any candidate under any circumstances if he fills the application form with wrong details and submits the application form there is no way that those details can be corrected later on so in case you have filled any wrong detailed in the application form then you are urged to fill the application form again and submit it again so in case you have submitted two different application forms the second one being the correct one the latest application form and the latest registration that has been done on the website that shall be counted by the upsc so even if you fill something wrong don't worry fill it again and fill the application form again and thereby note the registration id that is issued to you and the later part of the registration or the latest registration that you have done that is something that shall be counted by the upsc here you also find in the application form a detailed idea about the requirements when it comes to uploading of documents uploading of photographs uploading of signature and what are the exact dimensions that need to be present for these documents the photo id proof that you are supposed to upload that has to be in pdf format only so please ensure that you convert whatever photo id that you have into pdf and then only you upload it okay at the end of all these instructions you get a tab where you have to click on i agree upon clicking on that you shall be directed into part 1 registration which shall be asking you about your educational background about the exam preferences and your personal details as well so to begin with you have to fill your name so please ensure that your name is exactly the same as per your matriculation certificate because that is considered as a proof of your name and also ensure that you do not use any prefixes such as mr or miss when it comes to filling of names then you have to select your gender date of birth father's name mother's name and so on but you have to ensure that even while writing or mentioning about your father's name and mother's name please make it a point that you don't include prefixes such as mr shri mrs shrimati and so on then after that you have to select the nationality your marital status as well as candidates who belong to the persons with benchmark disability criteria they have to select the option in this particular point after that you have to select the community and whether you belong to minority community or not and accordingly when you fill all of these then here you get a window which shall be activated if you are eligible for any fees remission in case you are not eligible for any fees remission this window shall largely be inactive then after that you have to select your educational qualification as well as the degree subject that was present in the educational qualification what is the degree through which you have completed your graduation then you get a detailed form for your address and address details including the state the district the pin code phone number mobile number email id now this section is important because based upon the details that you fill in this section the commission will use this for communication purposes but please ensure that your mobile number and your email id is accurate because that is what is utilized by the commission in order to communicate with you regarding the availability of the admit cards regarding 
when you complete the registration and sending you the registration number. Then after that, you have to click on continue. After you click on continue, you shall be redirected to another small portal where you shall be asked whether you are claiming any age relaxation or not. If not, or if yes, you select this and then you continue again, whereby you shall be redirected again to details regarding the ID card as well as the details regarding the exam that you are appearing for. So here you are asked about your photo ID card. Now please ensure that you mention only that photo ID card which you are going to carry with yourself in the exam center. And it is this ID card that you have to upload at the later stage of part two registration as well. So please don't commit a mistake of writing or mentioning an ID card here in the form in the registration and carrying a different ID card altogether in the exam hall. So if you are writing about your Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number and so on, make sure that that is the card or that is the ID that you carry to the exam hall as well. So here you have to write the photo ID card number. You have to confirm that photo ID card number. After that, you have to write about the percentage that you gained at the graduation level. So in graduation, generally you are granted a percentage or you are granted a combined GPA or a CGPA system. In case of CGPA system, convert it to the percentage and then write it in this particular column. Here, you have to write about the number of attempts that you have already made in the civil services examination. After that, in the lower portion of the page, you will find the selection of detail of the center for the mains exam. Here, you are asked for the center for the mains exam, okay? The center for the prelims examination is asked at a later stage. Then the language medium for examination for paper one to paper five, the language medium that you want the paper to be in. Then the optional subjects that you want to select, which optional subject you want to write your exam in, that is something that you select in this particular window. The language medium that you want to write your optional subject in. And then there is a question that whether you hail from Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland or Sikkim. Because if you select this, then you are given a host of options regarding the paper A of the qualifying paper. After that, there are certain details that are asked from the candidate regarding the forest service examination as well. So depending upon what you have selected as educational qualification, the subject in your graduation, depending upon that, this window shall be available to you or not. Because Indian Forest Services is not available for all streams of graduation. After that, here you are asked about the Center for Indian Forest Service Mains Examination. Here is where you select the Center for the Mains Examination and thereby you also have to select the optional subjects that you choose for the Mains Exam. Now, in case you are applying only for the civil services examination and you are not applying for the forest service examination, you do not need to fill this. And while selecting for the exam that you are applying, you can fill it there itself. You will be granted with three different options that what is the exam that you are applying for. The first option shall be civil services examination. Second option shall be forest services examination and the third shall be civil services and forest service examination. So if you want to apply only for the civil services or only for the forest services, you can select either of those options. If you are applying for both 
civil services as well as forest services examination, then only you shall be seeing this particular window and this particular page. Now, for both these examinations, the prelims is the same. And it is the marks of the prelims that decides whether the candidate is eligible for the mains of civil services or the mains of forest services. Because the mains examination of civil services and forest services are conducted differently. So that is why here you are asked about the details of the optional subjects that you want to appear for while appearing for the forest service mains examination. Make it a point that you study diligently about the subject that you want to appear for for the forest service examination. Because once you select a particular optional subject for the forest services or for the civil services, you cannot change it after submission of the form. So, in case of forest services mains examination, you need to select two of the optional subjects and also, you have to mention about the number of attempts that you have already made in case of forest services exam. After that, you click on continue and all the above mentioned details are saved by UPSC. So that is where your part one registration is completed and you shall be viewing this particular kind of page on your screen where you will get a mention of the registration ID, about your name, father's name, mother's name, date of birth, as well as the address. You are advised to save this page on your system or to take a printout of this just for verification purposes. After this starts the part two registration. So, Please understand that unless and until you do not complete both part one and part two registration, the total application form is deemed to be incomplete. So that is why you have to fill in both part one and part two of this application form. So for part two of this registration, again, you need to go back to the first window. Here, as you can see on the right hand side, you get a link for part two registration. Upon clicking on that link, you are then directed to enter the registration ID which has been issued to you after submitting the part one of the registration form along with the mention of your date of birth and you are supposed to enter the CAPTCHA that is denoted here. After that, you shall be directed to the payment window, where you can make the payment through online banking, net banking, debit card, credit card, or any of the available portals. In case you are not applying or in case you are not paying through online medium and you want to pay through cash, then please ensure that you end up filling your application form one day before the last day. That is up till 23rd of March 2021 itself. Because it is after that that a chalan is generated and with that chalan you can go to the nearest bank of SBI and there you can fill in the requisite fees. Now after the payment has been conducted successfully there is a receipt that is generated. As you can see, the transaction is considered as a success. Then you have to click on continue, whereby you shall then be guided on to the portal regarding uploading of photograph, uploading of signature, as well as uploading of photo ID card that you have mentioned in the earlier portion of the application form. So, when you are uploading your scanned photograph, please ensure that that particular photograph is within the limits that are prescribed for the photograph and the signature that has to be uploaded. Where will you find the exact detail of the limits 
that your photo needs to be in, you can find by this link or through the initial set of instructions that were mentioned before starting the part one registration process. Now, when you are trying to upload the photo ID card document, please ensure that your photo ID card is in the PDF format. And only after that, you should upload it. And it should be the same photo ID card that you have mentioned earlier, and it should be the same ID card that you will be carrying with yourself to the exam hall as well. After this, you can click on upload of image, whereby all the images that you have selected shall be uploaded. After the upload has been completed, please verify once again that you have uploaded the right photo in the right section. That is, many candidates sometimes, they tend to upload the photo ID card under scanned photo category, the photo under the ID card category, and so on. So please ensure that all the upload documents are in order, they are as you intend it to be, and also that your signature is actually legible and it is clear enough because that is the signature that shall stay with the commission throughout the cycle of examination. Now, many of the candidates face difficulty when it comes to resizing their photo. Because once you try to upload a photo, many of the times the size of the photo is not as per the requirements of this particular portal. So resize the photo according to whether that photo that you are uploading, if it is larger or smaller than the prerequisite requirement. After that, you shall be directed to the center selection and agreeing to declaration criteria, where please ensure that you select the center for your prelims examination, you click on the declaration that you agree to every detail that you have uploaded, and that is what shall finish and complete your part two registration process as well. And after completion of the part two registration process, you shall be receiving an SMS whereby a confirmation message shall be delivered to you that your part two registration has been completed. So that is all that is required to know in order to fill the application form. And that is how you fill the whole application form for the civils examination. Hope that you don't face any difficulty and hope that all your doubts have been resolved through this video. That shall be all. Thank you and all the best for the coming examination.